on behalf of my family, thanks to the Financial Historical Society for recognizing Mom and Dad and honoring them in this way. Uh, I'm sure they would be humbled by this. Uh, with me, I'm Charles, Charlie, not Charles. My mother didn't call me Charles. I would be my brother Bill. Um, our sister, Rosalie, would have been here, but she had a run in with a forklift this week and fell and broke a kneecap. She's nursing her broken kneecap right now. Uh, Bill's daughter is with us, Lynn. Bill's son is with us, Brian. My son, Marty. My daughter, Amy. Uh, that's it. And then all the Zimmerman family, we're all related to. <laughs> so we kind of filled the place up with people that have a little bit of Smith blood in them. Uh, but anyway, uh, I will begin by saying that uh, uh, I will refer to my parents as mom and dad as I go along. I, I, I can't, I'm not comfortable with calling them by the first thing except to get started here. And J. Raymond Smith, Mary Lois DeVoe, was born in Painterville, Ohio on June 12, 1911. That's 107 years ago. To Chester A. and Sarah Jones DeVoe. Her, her father, my grandfather, was an educator from the time he was 18 years old, and he served as superintendent of Caesar Creek School, Wayne Township School, which is Lee's Creek, and Jefferson Township, which is Bowersville. Uh, and and uh, before his retirement in 1937, he retired in 1937, which means he was retired before I was even born, and he had that career behind him. During his 36 years as an educator, he served as a teacher, principal, organizer, county administrator, and superintendent, and all the time setting an example for mom and her older sister, Edna, who uh, followed up as teachers later on. Mom was the middle daughter in a family of five girls. Two younger brothers had died in childhood. The DeVoe family followed Grandpa C.A. as he was known later in life during his insurance career as he served in different communities. The two eldest daughters, Nellie and, Ed, and Edna, who became Mrs. George Leslie and served or taught two, uh, for several years in the school of Reesville, taught third and fourth grade there, with my mother's sister. Uh, and, uh, but Edna and, and her older sister, Nellie, had both graduated from Wayne Township High School. Grandpa then was, uh, was moved to Bowersville, or moved to Bowersville as the superintendent of schools there. And uh, my mother and uh, her sister Martha, who became Charles Dean Glass's wife, and died in 1944 at the age of 28, uh, they graduated from, from uh, Bowersville. Mother's younger sister, Willanna, uh, who lives in a rest of a nursing home in Xenia today and just celebrated her 94th birthday a few days ago, uh, she graduated from Wilmington High School. So the, three, the five girls graduated from three different schools as Grandpa was moving around. Following graduation from Jefferson Township High School in 1929, Mom continued her education at Wilmington College, where she was active in the social life as a member of Alpha Phi Kappa Sorority. She completed a two-year program to prepare her for a career in teaching and soon received a lifetime teaching certificate from the state of Ohio. She landed her first teaching assignment in Ross Township Schools of Greene County and remained there for two years, followed by one year in the Bloomingburg school system. Joseph Raymond Smith, better known as Jay Raymond, and dad to me and Bill and Rosalie, was born February 13, 1911, 107 years ago, in the Highland County community around Rainsboro, uh, little places called Barrett's Mill, I think, and uh, and uh, Fruitdale, or in that area. Uh, he was one of three boys and five girls born to Jacob L. and Margaret E. Hummel Smith. Grandpa Jake was a farmer, and all the children grew up learning the great farm work ethic which served them well throughout their lives. Early in Dad's life, the family moved to Washington Township in Clinton County near Midland City. It was while living there that Dad drove the school way. Uh, he was only nine or ten years old when that happened, but one of his older sisters, who I think was Gail's mom, got the job, a contract or whatever it was, to, to drive the school bus, but dad, according to him, was a better teamster 
<laughs> he handled the reins. But that, can you imagine his kids, nine, ten years old, driving a school way? He did that. They actually went and stole it in a, in a, the back of a wagon. <laughs> Sorry? It was actually a wagon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Already drawn a wagon. <laughs> yeah. You, some of you folks don't have any perception of how that was. It was real. Yeah. It was real. The Smith family later moved to Bowersville area where Dad continued his schooling at Jefferson Township School and became a classmate and married above my mom. It was at this school where their lifelong relationship began and flourished throughout their lives. They often sang together in church, and on one occasion sang together over a Columbus radio station as part of a uh, program featuring the Pleasant Grange of Bowersville. Following graduation in 1929, Dad continued his education at Wilmington College, but soon ran out of money and left school. Dad had always had a love of horses and, and thought for a short time, of, or considered for a short time, a career as a blacksmith, but then reconsidered uh, because he didn't think it would be a very secure and steady kind of a lifestyle. So he went into farming with his older brother, Leslie, who was farming in the Sedalia area. Shortly before his 21st birthday, he sustained a broken ankle and other leg injuries while or when a mule fell on him. And he often remarked that this was that he was blessed to make it through his life as a farmer with this being his only major injury. And that is a rare thing because it's one of the most dangerous uh, uh, occupations that anybody can engage in is farming. You all know that. You see all your five fingers, Matthew. There you go. <laughs> you do it right, you'll get to keep them all right. Exactly. <clears throat> Throughout the early 1930s, uh, Mom and Dad developed their relationship, and on December 26th, 1935, they were, re were reunited in marriage. By this time, Dad and his brother Leslie and family had moved to Stone Road near Melden, and uh, Mom and Dad moved into a small house on the farm and began their lives together there. Over the next several years, they built their life together around farming, gardening, church activities of the Richland United Methodist Church, and child rearing with the arrival of William D. in 1938, Rosalie in 1943, and me in 1944. By the way, uh, those of you that know Bill know that it was a, probably a pretty, uh, a pretty tough fight for me to get this job over him. <laughs> <laughs> The public speaker that he is. <laughs> we, we tussled on the floor for quite a while over this. <laughs> those, of you, those of you that know him know that there's, that's just absolutely not true. <laughs> All right. Um, over the next several years, uh, okay, uh, uh, yeah, long place here. During that time, uh, after kids came along, mom and dad were very active in the, or mom was active in the Richland WSCS, Mothers, the Modern Mothers Club, Sabina Garden Club, and the Reeseville School PTA. Meanwhile, dad was working hard to be a successful farmer, farmer growing corn, wheat, hay, hogs, and cattle, six days a week, always observing the Sabbath, with the only exception being wheat harvest or tending to the immediate needs of livestock. And that was that was the way it was. There was no exception to that. Mom and Dad became very active in the Masons and Eastern Star Lodges in Sabina, both serving multiple times as worthy matron and patron of the Sabina Order of Eastern Star. And in 1961, Mother was appointed Deputy Grand Matron of the 21st District of the Ohio Grand Chapter. And that means something to those of you that are familiar with Eastern Star. It was a very... Uh, busy job for her, and uh, and she had just had hip uh, replacement surgery at that time. And I remember going with Dad at times, carrying her upstairs. And a lot of times the lodge halls were upstairs, and she was unable to negotiate the stairs. And Dad and I carried her up the stairs. Dad was a 32nd degree Mason and member of the Scottish Rite. 
In addition, Dad served on the Reeseville and Simon County School Boards for more than a dozen years, and he was on the initial board, the original board of the Simon County Schools. So when that two, when the Reeseville and Wayne were merged, Dad was appointed one of the board members of that, that original board. He served uh, as a board member for 12 years. Uh, he was also a 4 H leader for five years, and they were also active in the Reeseville Holman School League, which presented several plays with members of the community making up the casts. Stay on that picture for a second. Dad directed Willie the Warrior, and that's this picture right here, which was presented in March of 1950. And there's a person in this room that's in that picture. You're all laughing. You see him? Kevin? You Matthew? Yeah, yeah. Casey. This, and you, you, you recognize the people that had to think of you. Kathleen was always volunteering all sorts of things. And Who was? Kathleen. Oh, really? She would take the in charge of the music of the place, and she was volunteering, but she was gone. <laughs> I, I, I remembered most of those people, but I had to to uh, dig up a newspaper article to, to put a name on every one of them that's in there. There's one that's even in there you can't even see. Um, and again, yeah, that is uh, Mrs. Grove, I think. Uh, Tom Grove, I believe. Is tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us that, yeah. yeah. You want to you want to name them all now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have time. <laughs> Myrtle Gibson, Lawrence Long, Mrs. Baker, Mrs. Fred Baker, I believe it's Mrs. Grove, Rhea Hartman, Dorothy Bowermaster, Mr. Asher, my dad, Helen Gullis uh, McFadden, Gail, Joy, Good. In the fall of 1956, Mom returned to the classroom. This is why we're placed to be an honor, because she's a teacher. Uh, 1956, Mom returned to the classroom after I was kind of supposedly old enough to behave myself at school, which turned out to be just the opposite. But anyway, she went back to school and she taught one year at New Antioch, and then as and then as well, she taught there as a sixth grade teacher, and then at Sabina for eight years as a sixth grade teacher, along with Anna Morris. They they shared sixth grade teaching duties uh, for eight years at Sabina. And then she finished out her teaching career with eight years in the New Vienna Elementary, which suited her very well since she and Dad had moved to the New Vienna community in 1963. When she retired in the spring of 74, she had completed 20 years in the classroom to help to shape the lives of many young people. Some of them are in the room here today. Susan, you wouldn't be Susan who you are without having made that. <laughs> While living in the New, New Vienna community, they were active in, active members of the New Vienna United Methodist Church, and Dad became an enthusiastic member of the Lions Club. Dad decided the fall of 73 would be the end of his farming career, so they purchased a new home in Sabina on South Jackson Street, where they would live out their retirement years. Uh, remember, the house was under construction when, when, they, when Dad purchased it. And, and uh, this, is so, this is so typical of my dad. The guy said, uh, whoever we were talking to on the house said, well, how do you want to, how do you want to finance it? Dad said, I don't finance it. I'll pay you half now, half when it's done. And that's the way he bought it. Because they, he, he was old enough to remember the depression and, and always stay away from from credit. So they bought a new home in Savannah in, in, in 1973. Life in Savannah was good. They joined the Savannah Methodist Church, played cards and board games with friends and family while thoroughly enjoying their entire life. <laughs> Mom crocheted dozens of Afghans and other items, and I don't know how many she crocheted, but there's a bunch of them, and we have uh, we have some. I, I, I think, but we have a lot. And became active in the Retired Teachers Association and volunteered many hours at Autumn Years Nursing Home. Dad maintained his love of agriculture by helping his brother-in-law, Beanie Glass. Most everybody you know Beanie. So Dad was here in Spina and driving out to Beanie's and helping him as many years as he was able to continue to do that. Um, and, and tended a garden in the backyard. And that kept him, kept him busy too. 
They were very proud and happy to follow the activities of their first two grandchildren, Brian and Lynn, and welcomed four more during those years of retirement. They also were blessed with three great grandchildren during their life on earth and, and to add to their happiness. We are so thankful they were able to enjoy over 20 years of retirement and live out their final years in the comfort of their home right here in Savannah. Dad died in the fall of 1997 at the age of 86, and Mom joined him 11 months later for eternal life together. Just a few days past her. 87th birthday. 